Texas goes to Donald Trump, I think there's not much of a chance that it's going to be changing. Okay. Your opinion um, has the gymnasium, gymnasium cons uh, and um, one class from Mons Tabor Gymnasium in Montabaur, but another class from Mons Tabor Gymnasium in Montabaur thinks Hillary Clinton is uh, going to win, but it's three to one, so we say Texas goes to Donald Trump. Utah. Carl Schmidt Rotloff Gymnasium in Chemnitz has looked on this date and thinks. So, according to our research, we predict that Utah will vote for Donald Trump. Okay. Six electoral votes. This is an, um, for once, Utah is interesting uh, because there's a third party candidate who's running competitively, who's a dissident Republican and a Mormon. Uh, the Mormons in Utah don't like Donald Trump particularly, uh, so he has a chance. I'm not saying we're going to pull it out, but it's a three-way race, so it could go to a third-party candidate. The impact of that, Hillary's not going to win it, but the impact of that would be that six electoral votes that you would expect Trump to have would be taken away from him and gone elsewhere. So that would have a significant impact in a very close race for sure. But I think to keep it in the Trump column right now is probably the safe thing to do. Okay. Let's look at Vermont. Um, B BIP Kreativitätsgymnasium Leipzig and the Paul Julius von Reuter Schule in Kassel thinks Hillary Clinton is going to get these three votes. And I think um, you have the same opinion. So let's move on to Virginia. 13 electoral votes. Um, we have four schools who have adopted this beautiful state. Um, and the Private Gesamtschule der FAW GmbH Petershagen is here. Uh, we think that Virginia goes to Hillary Clinton. All right. And um, all of the three other schools, the Lilienthal Gymnasium Berlin, Andrea Schneider Schule Heilbronn, and Paul von Dennis Gymnasium Schifferstadt have the same opinion, Hillary Clinton gets these votes. Washington, not Washington DC, Washington State, um, we have two schools um, that vote for Hillary Clinton, Matare Gymnasium Meerbusch and Sebastian Münster Gymnasium Ingelheim. Washington DC, Alexander von Humboldt Gymnasium Greifswald is not here, um, but they say um, the three votes of Washington DC of the District of Columbia go to Hillary Clinton. No other opinion on that. We move on to West Virginia. Um, not so easy. We have three, three schools. Um, two schools are here. Von Bülow Gymnasium Neu Dietendorf. Are you here? No? Okay. If <laughs> Not even the teacher? Um, they think Donald Trump will win the state, perhaps that's the explanation. Um, the Carlo Schmidt Oberschule Berlin thinks... Uh, hi. Um, we think that Hillary Clinton will vote for us. Yeah. <laughs> and we have the Falkenburg Schule in Ulm. They think Donald Trump is going to win. So two schools think Donald Trump is going to win. Hillary Clinton will not win West Virginia. So now we're getting close. Wisconsin, four schools again. One school is here, OSZ Habeland aus Nauen, from Nauen. What is your vote here? We think uh, the state goes to Hillary Clinton. All right. The Albert Einstein, Gymna Albert Einstein Gymnasium twice. We have two classes from Albert Einstein Gymnasium in Neubrandenburg and the Wolfhelm Schule in Olf and they also think Hillary Clinton gets the 10 electoral votes and I would ask you uh, again, is there any other opinion on that or is it clear Wisconsin goes to Hillary Clinton? Pretty clear. A lot of uh, ethnic German voting there, for whatever that may mean. <laughs> That's not difficult, is it? <laughs> yeah. Wyoming, um, three schools, the Herder Gymnasium Berlin is here. Hello, um, we have predicted that Donald J. Trump is going to take Wyoming. Yeah. <laughs> and I um, have to say the Gymnasium Steglitz in Berlin and the Evangelisches Gymnasium Leukersdorf also think Wyoming goes to Donald Trump. 
Wyoming was the last state on our list. Um, and it's very, very clear. <laughs> I would say the outcome 361 votes for Hillary Clinton and 177 for Donald Trump. Can we, can Are we you play surprised? a game here? Can Are we you play a little game? Yes. Can we move uh, the states that the experts up here <laughs> disagreed on? Can we move Alaska, Iowa, Arizona, and Ohio into the Trump column? And then let's see where we are, and then we'll play a swing state game, okay? So if we move those, which we both agreed we thought would be probably Trump states, move those into the Trump column, uh, Alaska, Iowa, Arizona, and Ohio. And yeah, Ohio. So now what do we got? Whoa, we're getting a little bit closer. We're getting a little bit closer. Now, let's move... New Hampshire and Florida, <laughs> New Hampshire and Florida into Trump's column and see what happens. Because those were the ones we thought were very close of the, I mean, Michigan, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina kind of remain as swing states. But, but don't, don't do those yet. So now you're getting really close. Now let's say, <laughs> let's say he wins North Carolina. What happens then? Holy moly! <laughs> so, to, to the point that Bill was making, if that all happens and he wins either Michigan or Pennsylvania, he wins the presidency. I mean, just to put a... Now, let's say he wins... No, the other one that we sort of didn't talk about, throw Nevada in there and see what happens on Nevada. How about that? Now, what happens if that happens? Anybody know? Congress. Uh, just an electoral dreadlock. So the Congress decides who gets the presidency. And right now, the Congress is Republican. And it, 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 Congress is, is substantially Republican. The old Congress or the new one? <laughs> it almost doesn't matter, because the new one will be Republican, too. I think it would... I think it would be the, oh, well, let's put it this way. It goes into the House of Representatives. The Electoral College votes in the middle of December. I don't think the new guys get sworn in until early January, right? But I don't know the answer to that. But it, but it looks like it would be, and it's a weird thing. I think it's like every state gets one vote depending on its delegation. You know how that works, Professor? I do. <laughs> it, it is, it, it is one, one vote per uh, state delegation, and the, the Republicans control at least 30 states, maybe, I think it's 30 now, Democrats 20. So that means a uh, Republican will be elected president. The Senate will then elect the vice president by the same procedure, and uh, that could be a little closer, but probably that's still, if, the, if it's the sitting Senate, they, the Republicans still have a majority. Um, if, if, that's, if that's the timing of it, which I guess it would be. So as you're watching election results, I think we all agree, if Hillary starts losing, you know, um, if she starts losing uh, Michigan and Pennsylvania, she's in deep trouble. But if, as you're watching election results, I would say New Hampshire, with its four little baby electoral votes, um, is probably the first state of the swing states that we'll have results for, because it closes earlier, in the evening and, um, and it's a small state, so it shouldn't, theoretically at least, it shouldn't take as long to count all those votes. So that, uh, that's an important one to watch because if that um, goes to Clinton, it means that even if Trump wins all of those other states, as long as she holds Pennsylvania and um, uh, Michigan, and assuming everything else happens the way most people expect it will, uh, that he can, that, that she would win the presidency. And by the way, Al Gore would have been president had he won New Hampshire, because George Bush only had 271 electoral votes when he won that. Um, and by the way, the other thing, you really want to throw it in the loop, your, your thing about the one, yeah, talk about that. If it goes to 269 to 269, and Trump wins that northern congressional district in Maine, then he's got 270. Uh, 
Other, or, or if Clinton wins the one seat in Omaha, Nebraska, then she has won. So isn't that, isn't that fascinating? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I just, I find this stuff fascinating. It's, so it's bottom funny. line, I guarantee you the campaigns are looking at this map just this way. And that's why they're trying to, the Clinton campaign is trying to reinforce Michigan. That's why Trump is going to Michigan. That's where they're trying to reinforce Pennsylvania. That's why Trump is going to Pennsylvania. And that's why last night, the professor talked about, Bill T Chandler talked about going to, you know, the Clinton had to boost her uh, turnout in Cleveland. Where was she last night? In Cleveland. Who was she with? LeBron James the basketball star of the team that won the NBA championship, talking about get out and vote. And then where did she go after that plane ride? I mean, after that rally? She flew to New Hampshire for another rally. So I guarantee you the campaigns are looking at this map just the way we are today. So New Hampshire, I mean, in terms of making it significantly harder for Trump to win, even if he wins all those other swing states, if she wins New Hampshire, that's, that's actually a bigger deal than you uh, would otherwise think. It may not at the end of the day mean that much if, if she does what you all predict, but, but, uh, but that, I mean, that would be a big deal. And the flip side is if he, if he holds it, if he wins it, not a death knell for Hillary Clinton, but it keeps one of the avenues to get to 270 or to get to 269, which is really all he needs to be elected president, it keeps one of those avenues open to him. Did the um, FBI decision to not go after her uh, in the email affair um, came too late or I'll now, now the ambassador gets uh, <laughs> diplomatic? Uh, I, I, I don't know, uh, but I think uh, the the effect of the FBI uh, intervention uh, a week ago, or whenever it was, has already been felt in the electorate. And so this last step uh, by the director himself uh, is probably more about him than about the election. I think the first one was more about him than the election, too. Yeah. Could I make one more comment? Oh, of course. I wanna, uh, let's remember that if it's very close like this, there will be challenges to, in states to the validity of ballots, uh, like we had in Florida. Secondly, there are always a lot of votes that don't get counted by election day, late ballots that have to be counted. And they can tip one state one direction or another. Uh, both, both parties have a team of lawyers all ready to go to challenge these situations in every state where this might happen. So we could have all kinds of controversies immediately uh, about ballot counting because we know that could make the difference when it's very, very close in some state. Absolutely. How, how big is the, um, and my last question probably, how, how, how sure are you that we have a result Wednesday morning, say, let's say seven o'clock, a percentage? Yeah, that yeah. we have a uh, result? I'm re I am reasonably certain uh, that we'll have a result. I mean, you, you, uh, you know, these challenges only make sense if you're, you know, like less than 1% difference in the, you know, in the polls. I mean, just because, you know, you recount ballots, it's, you know, it can shape some. Hey, I'm a guy who lost an election by 31 votes, okay, so I know about this stuff. And, um, it, it, you know, they can, they can make it. And I had actually, after election day, I was 114 votes behind. And not that I remember these things. But um, this is about 25 years ago. But there were 2,000 of these late ballots that hadn't been counted. And I had an absentee ballot program, and the other side didn't. And so I shrunk the margin, but only to 31 votes. And it, even at that point, it really wasn't worth going through the cost and the expense and everything of, of, a, of a challenge. And because uh, there are a whole number of candidates in the race and all that. So, I mean, it's gotta be reasonably close to do that uh, in one or two uh, states. So, but if there's enough of an electoral vote margin, 
that even if it's close in one state and you're not sure about it, that even if you say, okay, fine, we'll give that state to the losing candidate and there's still a victory. But if you're talking that 269 thing, you are absolutely right. There's gonna be maybe three years before we knew it was elected to pick the president. So, thank you so much for your explanations. I think we should move on. You can stay here. You can go back. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill Chandler. You not only collected numbers and read articles um, and gave your vote up here, you um, also um, you had to be creative and you had to make a video, made, make a website, uh, a magazine, um, whatever. And um, the school election team has decided on 10 categories, on 10 prizes, 10 awards, um, which we're we, um, going to award now. Um, so I think, Ambassador, you have to come up again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you have 10 categories, and I, um, not, not all of the schools who have won an award are, he are here today, um, but some are. Um, so when you hear your name, um, please come up. The best campaign video um, goes to the Sebastian Münster Gymnasium Ingelheim. Um, the video is called Washington State Goes Blue. My advice is that the Hillary Clinton campaign should get that video and show it. That's a great video, for the Democrats at least. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Next category, best newspaper. I guess there are many, many, many good newspapers in here. But um, one school has won the award and perhaps we could say we start the video first. Do you have a list? Is it possible? It's, I'm sorry, it's an image. So it's the, the Salem General in Oregon and the BSZ Schwarzenberg has won this award and I think you are here today. So please, um, the teacher, Mrs. Günther, comes up and... So, did you get a picture? Or? Did you get your pictures? Hmm? <laughs> okay, sorry. I just heard the students are also um, supposed to come up here on stage. Next time we make it better. Sorry for that. You want to stand up? Um, BSZ Schwarzenberg. <laughs> hey, come up here, I'm sorry. I have eight more categories to go, so. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful job. I have to. I don't see it exactly, but I'll look it up. Best collage. It's, um, the, it's called The Candidates in New York. <laughs> okay, we can see that. And um, the Humboldt Schule about Homburg in Hessen has won this award. He's not here today, so there's no picture, but a big applause. <laughs> Category four, best creative video. It's called Massachusetts, and it's here. <laughs> Can you see it? 
Can we see it? The Unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America. Do you believe in global warming, climate change? I think that there'll be little change here. It'll go up, it'll get a little cooler, it'll get a little warmer like it always has for millions of years. It'll get cooler, it'll get warmer. It's called weather. Taxes too high, wages too high. We're not going to be able to compete against the world. I hate to say it, but we have to leave it the way it is. We've got to raise the federal minimum wage so we have a higher floor. <laughs> Obamacare is a disaster. You know it, we all know it. I want very much to save what works and is good about the Affordable Care Act. We are Massachusetts, and we approve this message. Wrong. Make sure you get out and vote November 28th. Max Planck Gymnasium Gelsenkirchen, <laughs> Schalke. <laughs> um, best poster. Um, this <laughs> it's called Wyoming, and I think the school is here. And uh, perhaps you would like to come up with your teacher, Mrs. Ba Ms. Baranov. Best song goes to the state of Rhode Island and the Katholische Schule Salvatore Berlin. Perhaps we can listen to it. Or do you want to sing it here? <laughs> Welcome to Rhode Island where the world is in silence. Clinton won in Providence, but leave it, here's the evidence. A state, we are small but strong together. We know how to sail in stormy weather. <laughs> Also, we have the best lobsters here, and for dinner we don't have any fear. What counts for us is good education, not just for a few, but the entire nation. He said he wanted to make America great again. But he ain't got a plan, man. We went from yes we can to this politician with a state plan. I lost my job. Now I feel dumb. This year I'm going to vote for Trump. I'm spending an election for years. What chance did I get us just brings me to tears? From my ocean state, it will never be too late. I say, wake up, America, our time is now. Let's stop this stroke, or I don't know how. Thanks, Lord Island, for your trust and hope. The cheering press with a landslide boat. Katholische Schule, Salvatore Berlin, and Mrs. Dorsel come up. Here. You could sing together now. <laughs> Congratulations. Category seven, best website. I think it's the state of Missouri and the <laughs> Friederico Franciscium <laughs> School in Bad Wobaran. I'm happy I've learned your name. Can you um, come up and just explain the website perhaps towards? We created this website informing about the elections in Missouri. Uh, we have like a few topics 
about the election in general, like an introduction to our website, as well as an uh, informative text about Missouri in general, and then we go more into detail with the debate and the reactions of the Missourians. And yeah, added to that, we have current polls and stats about the, uh, right at the bottom, you should see uh, the current polls, and you can clearly see that Trump is ahead by, I think, 15% uh, or something. Very well, thank you. Best educational video goes to the state of Washington, uh, Washington um, and the Matare Gymnasium Meerbusch has won this award. And I guess we can see it. U.S. Election Day is coming closer and closer. People all over the U.S. need to vote for their favorite candidate. Today, we're going to take a closer look at Washington State and its preference for the Democrats. Let us introduce the average Washingtonian. His name is Jacob and he's 37 years old. He lives in Seattle and is employed in the office and administrative sector where his median hourly wage is $70. Definitely not enough to pay for his rent. Something else he criticizes is his long way to work since congestion is a big problem. This is how Hillary Clinton would solve his problems. Hillary Clinton would invest in American infrastructure, not only to improve American roads, but also to modernize the national airspace system, which is linked to more job opportunities. She will enforce fair housing by lending laws. By doing that, she promises to have affordable housing built and she wants to facilitate the access to home loans. She will introduce a plan, Make It in America, which will strengthen the American manufacturing industry. Jacob's problems also reflect the Washingtonian's election history, a general preference for the Democrats. Hillary Clinton is going to be elected in Washington State on November 8th. She offers solutions for the most important issues Washingtonians have to deal with. The next category is the category Best Blog, um, and it goes to My Life in Pennsylvania um, by the Monsterbohr Gymnasium in Montabaur, um, who is not here today. Um, and I don't, do we, we see a picture? And we can, you could all look it up again on the web page later on. Big applaud, the Best Blog. <laughs> And now we have the category most creative contribution and it goes to Get Votes the Game, Nebraska. And it's again the Frederico Francisco School in Bad Oberan. Welcome again up at stage here. Just one organizational question, Mr. Ambassador, do you have still have some minutes or yeah, sure. can we go on? So I would like to call up all teachers who are here today. I think it's uh, you are 34 of you, uh, 33 probably, and I will call you up um, so you can come up here and we take a group photo. Jens Rösener, 
Luise-Henriette-Gymnasium. Grit Team Rot. Same School. Ja. Heike Krutzwacher, Strittmatter Gymnasium Gransee. Silke Maifahrt, Humboldt Gymnasium Potsdam. Dorin Ritter, private Gesamtschule Petershagen. Same School Dorothea Buttenschön. Fabian Franz, OSZ Georg Schlesinger, Berlin. Susan Mehl, OSZ Georg Schlesinger, Berlin as well. Ilona Isensee, Kurt Tucholsky, Oberschule, Berlin. Paula Altland, Ulrich von Hutten Gymnasium, Berlin. Monika Dorse, Katholische Schule Salvator Berlin. Jana Harlisch, OSC Haveland Friesack Nauen. Susanne Weiland, Alexander von Humboldt Gymnasium. Kerstin Weißert, Carlo Schmidt Oberschule Berlin. Anef Baranov, Herder Gymnasium. Sieglinde Spranger, Dr. Wilhelm André Gymnasium Chemnitz. Heike Bachmann, Pestalozzi Oberschule Limbach. Anja Günther, BSZ Schwarzenberg. Patrick Emmelmann, OSZ Telto Fleming. Verena Jennecke, Claire Bloch Schule Berlin. It's not here? You're not. Stefan Tietz, Otto Nagel Gymnasium Berlin. Christina Kurzmann, Goethe Gymnasium Lichterfelde. Brigitte Kassel, Gabriele von Bülow Gymnasium Berlin. Ilka Wölkerling, Gabriele von Bülow Gymnasium Berlin. Marc Meinheit, Leibniz Oberschule Berlin. Matthias Claudius, Askanisches Gymnasium. <lacht> Katrin Witt, Friederika oh, Franziseum Gymnasium zu Bad Doberan. <lacht> Nina Christmann, Philipp Melanchthon Gymnasium Meine. Heike Junghans, Karl Schmidt Rottloff Gymnasium Chemnitz. Mirko Bischoff, Johann Gottfried Herder Gymnasium Halle. Christina Oppel Hedon, Hedon Helilienthal Gymnasium Berlin. Piet Germershausen, Gabriele von Bülow Gymnasium Berlin. Und Ulrich Kempkens, Bettina von Arnhem Schule. Habe ich jemanden vergessen? Gibt es noch Lehrer hier? Würden Sie sich selber vorstellen? Einmal selber vorstellen. 
Herzlich willkommen. Entschuldigung. Alle mal lachen. Sie können stolz sein. Und bevor Sie gleich gehen, Sie müssen alle links an Frau Dr. Kohl vorbei und kriegen Stofftaschen, die mit irgendwas gefüllt sind. Ja, vielen Dank. Guten Abend.